have a story to tell? I believe you. Ghost. Cryptids. The unknown. Let's talk about it. This is my ghost cast. Ghostcasters, welcome to episode 8. In this episode, we'll be interviewing Tim Marsh, good friend of mine. Uh, he's got uh, two pretty interesting stories. I think you guys will like it. Uh, the dialogue between him and Chiquita North Padre is absolutely awesome. So this has uh, now become one of my favorite episodes. Please enjoy. Hi, welcome back to my ghost cast. I'm your host. Threads the awesome. My mini co-host here in Corpus is Lydia, aka Chiquita North Padre. De la gente. All right. <laughs> Today's guest is a good buddy of mine named Tim Marsh or Timothy Marsh. Hey Tim, welcome to my show. I'm happy to be here. It's fun. Fun to do this. Yeah, Tim and I go way back since elementary school. Elementary middle school and high school and a little bit of after that school huh and detention yeah, yeah. and all kinds of trouble that we got into yeah all right, a little Tim's bit of party after party school yeah after party school <laughs> <laughs> all right so how did y'all well what's what give me an interesting story that both of y'all have together like what is something y'all uh have? real quick uh there's a house another mutual friend of ours we used to hang out all the time and uh i i happened to get in a fight with the neighborhood bullies and i uh, fought them off but uh rudy and our threads and another friend of ours were in the backyard in a pool and they heard the ruckus so threads came back came out the front and, and uh saw what was happening and well threads tell them yeah well, I, I just wind up chasing these guys down in the park uh, I was so mad that they, they, you know what I mean? Anytime somebody, somebody jumps your friend, uh, especially if it's, it's more than one guy, you know, two on one, they jump your friend and they, these kids run past the fence saying, that's what you get. Oh. And then we're like, uh, what the hell? And then Tim's like, dude, they jumped me. That's all I needed to hear. And then I just got my shoes on, took off, ran after them in the park, started punching the guys, you know, tackled the guys. They came out of the shadows and, uh, sure enough, man. Beating him down, man. I was beating him down. And I was took out the big guy, got kicked in the face twice while taking the big guy. Then finally, I waited for that last kick. Sure enough, he kicked. And I wound up going, ah, oh, biting the dude's <laughs> leg. And then I, I threw it on top of the dude and started beating him with that dude's calf. You know, and then, uh, and then they said the magic word, uh, stick him. And I was like, oh, I need to back off. I, you know, I did not see a knife. Uh, I wasn't prepared for that, so I hadn't been trained in knife to knife to hand combat or knife in the rib combat. I just wasn't, wasn't ready for that, you know. But what's crazy to me is, so we all went to the same high school. We did, but I never knew Tim in high school, but I knew you. And then when we did the reunion, it was like I know you, I know you. I don't know how I didn't know him yeah. in high school. We didn't meet till later, till we were in our thirties. We didn't, we didn't, we never met. It was, yeah. it's crazy, but we knew the same Yeah, people. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. really neat. That's what I miss about home is every time I go to, you know, someplace and I'm, I'll see people that I know. And Tim, I think Tim was an introvert back in the day, weren't you, Tim? Yeah. Back yeah. in the day. He still is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he needs me to bring him out. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, so Tim was always on the down low. And I'm an extrovert, so I'm always like, hey, I'm the son, you know. Oh. And I get it, and that, that can be tiring to, for introverts. But I've been around you guys, introverts, all my life, so that's kind of how I understand my wife, right? Yeah. <laughs> These are the guys I talked about. So, man, Tim is an awesome guy. He, he's he's a really, really, really great guy. And, and so I heard that you have a couple of businesses. You want to tell us about those? Yeah, well. Actually, right before. 
right before that sorry tim don't you know her i mean how do you know how do you know conchita consuelo rodriguez over here well i wish i would have known her back in high school or since high school but we happened to meet and uh wait <laughs> he was going to hook up with my sister okay <laughs> yeah, Hodge twins. She met him. She met him on to, on Tinder. I hope I'm not embarrassing you. I had seen him on Tinder too because I had just got separated, and I was like, "You swiped right." I swiped him left. He looked so militant because he's Mr. NRA and Mr. The Bible and guns and da 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 da. You know, America. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, "Oh, he's kind of militant." But anyway, he ended up showing up. My sister was pass out drunk. And so him and I really hit it off. We were, we had so much in common, um, politically, um, our conservative viewpoints, and um, sorry if that offends anybody else, but we did nah, never be sorry, ever be sorry. We Look. did have a, a kindred connection that way. So yeah, Tim, yep. <laughs> anything, Tim? Oh, I, I I I asked her out, and she wouldn't have it, but we became best friend since so yeah yeah so so let me get this straight y'all never went out no we go out together all the time <laughs> all the time like every other day tim no is that true tim <laughs> <laughs> look at that look at that smile oh my god it's bigger than mine anyway why don't anyway you talk about your businesses <laughs> So, yeah, please tell us about your business, dude. These are pretty awesome. Oh, okay. Uh, Arc Properties, um, I'm a real estate investor. I invest in uh, multi-unit, multi-family units, and uh, I rehab, flip houses. So if anybody's trying to get rid of a house, property, distressed, just want to get out of it, call me, 361-600-1615. Uh, we'll work out a deal. And then I've got a, a YouTube channel. It's a Lone Star Backwoods and Backwater. It's all Texas hunting and fishing. That is awesome, man. Yeah. Actually, I will probably call you up. My clan, my guys are always interested in hunting. We just don't have anywhere to go. So, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm always hunting two-legged deer. On a, day, but. Lone Star Backwoods and Backwater, we're on Instagram and Facebook also, as well as YouTube. Uh, we got a lot of cool videos to watch on YouTube and, and, uh, you learn a lot from them too. It's just not watching. It's learning stuff, learning techniques, weapons, everything. Oh. So that's how him and I kind of, uh, started hanging out so much more because I really wanted my boys to learn uh, um, myself too, of course, but, um, he, he does private excursions, um, private lessons, I guess wow. we could say. And so he'll take you out on the boat or he'll take you out to the deer lease. And so my boys learned from him. I learned from him. And um, and then the rest was history. That's pretty awesome. I, you know, again, what I'm going to do, Tim, is I will have your advertisement here and we'll, we'll be putting it here and there. So that way people can reach out to you. That's pretty awesome. I, I'm uh, honored to be friends with both you guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Me too. I can tell that smile. Look at that grin. Ah, yeah. Anyways, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back, and Tim's going to tell his first story. Stay tuned. Again, this is my ghost cast, and I'm your host, Perez Gonzalez. Stay tuned. Edward Xavier Investigative Group, a professional investigations company with extensive experience in civil, criminal, and personal matters. Our company strives to utilize innovative and strategic planning to meet our clients' needs. In matters of child custody, infidelity, serious injury, or criminal defense, remember, every case merits an investigation. We offer complimentary consultations, so call 361-356-356. 8898 to discuss the matter near and dear to you. Thank you for your time and enjoy the show. Hey guys, welcome back to my ghost cast. 
I'm your host, Therese. My mini co-host, Consuelo Rodriguez, Lydia. Today's guest, Timothy Marsh. Tim, so you got a story for us. I do. My first. All right, tell us about it. My first experience. So for your audience, let me give a little quick background of Corpus Christi, Texas, where all three of us were raised. It was a trading post in the early 1800s the, on the Bayfront and the downtown area where of Corpus now on the Gulf of Mexico, right? In the Bay. Then it became mid-1800s. It was a, a military uh, army post, a, a fort. So, and then from there, of course, that's where the downtown of Corpus Christi came to be on the, on the, on the Bayfront there. So that would bring us to now, well, not now, but 10 years ago, I was a delivery driver for a local beer distributor. And one of the local restaurants, very, very, very uh, familiar, or one of the most known restaurants here in Corpus was back, was there in downtown. So it was, this was early in the morning I was doing my delivery there and I put all the beer in the closet and uh, I was waiting for the manager. She wasn't, she wasn't there yet. So I thought, and I walked over to her office just to check, double check and sure enough, I heard her, I heard her in, in her office. She was typing, typing up on the typewriter, moving her, uh, her chair around. And I could hear papers shuffling and everything. And I'm thinking, okay, well, she's here. She's busy. I'm not going to bother her. I'll give her a few minutes. And a few minutes go. And if anybody out there is a delivery driver, that you know, you've got scheduled stops. You got to be to. So, so I'm thinking, okay, I got to go. I can't be freaking waiting this long. So I was not. I started knocking on her door, like you know, give me my check. I'm thinking, give me. I'm need my check already. And uh, I'm knocking and nothing. She's still typing away, typing away, shuffling papers, going, and, you know, excuse my language, and I'm thinking, this bitch, she knows I've got other stops to go to. So I'm getting frustrated, kind of pissed off, and, and I started bang, knocking real hard, and, and same thing, just, like, ignoring me. So I'm pissed. So I start, I, I, I got on my, my cell phone, I start to call her, and here she comes around the corner, the manager that normally pays me and I, and I'm dumbfounded. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah. And I'm thinking, and I'm looking at her and she sees how, how confused I'm looking. And, and uh, I said, who, who is in your office right now? Because I can hear somebody in there rolling around on your chair, typing on your computer, you know, shuffling all your papers or whatever. And mind you, her office has no other doors. It's just that door. It's in a hallway across from the closet, the beer closet. And uh, <laughs> she kind of got a smirk on her and she unlocked the door and, and we both went in, turned on the light and there is nobody in there. No, not a soul, not a person in the in her office. What? Yeah. I said, oh, who the, man. excuse my language, who the fuck was in your office if you're just now walking in? And she kind of giggled and she said, oh, that's probably Charlie. I said, what are you talking? And, and I never really had any paranormal experiences before that, but that one sold me because it actually sounded like a person was in the office. And she said, that's probably Charlie. He's a local, he's just the resident ghost here. And uh, Corpus Christi has been, the downtown Corpus Christi has been around, like I said, since the early 1800s. So who knows what has happened or who's died since then till now. So it's pretty creepy down there. There's all other stories that. If you grew up in Corpus Christi, then you know somebody that knows somebody <laughs> that has experienced something downtown. So yeah. uh, the, the Black Tie Roses building, Doc McGregor, mm -hmm. who was a local historian, photographer, from way back when, all of his photos are in the museum. Yep. Um, the owners of that location, they will actually report 
they won't go to the back where his photo lab was. What? They bought the whole building, but they leave that side alone and then they only occupy the front. But all kinds of stuff happens. Um, they'll leave a tool out and then the tool's missing and then they go back and it's there again. I mean, oh. everybody, or the Ritz Theater. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stories downtown. Yeah. Just like my socks. <laughs> Man, my as always one pair that's just missing. Charlie's taking, yeah, Charlie's taking, Charlie's my, taking sock. my sock. Bastard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so I, have you? Uh, did you follow up or anything with that? Anything else? Did you hear anything about that particular your story? Uh, or, or Other than just, I continued to deliver there and <laughs> just same same stories with other because there was other beer drivers from other companies. Uh, Coca-Cola, you know, other vendors that would deliver, they, they would confirm what I, what I experienced also. So, wow. it, it, yeah. Man. Awesome. But as far as who, who it is, no, I never, I never found out. Nobody ever found out or who it might've been. Man. Wow. Um, There's probably a lot of stories like that there and about that place. Man. Oh Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what we'll do is we're going to take a small break, and Tim's got one more story for us. Stay tuned, guys. Once again, this is my ghost cast. Your host, Brez Gonzalez. Mini co-host. Lydia. Conchito Consuelo. Cervantes Orta. Tortilla. (laughs) And uh, our guest again. De La Fuente. (laughs) We got our guest is Timothy Marsh. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Don't forget also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my ghost cast. Your host, the awesomeness dude, me. Mini co-host. The awesomeness number two, Con- Lydia. Consuito, Consuito, Mojito. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. <laughs> I'm both and, uh, y'all. y'all both have an awesome smile, by the way. I have an amazing smile. I have an absolutely yep. amazing smile. I have the amazing smile number two. That's right. That's what it feels like to be number two. <laughs> All right, Tim. And we have our guest, Tim Marsh. An awesome special guest, special friend of mine. Grew up with him since I was we were in elementary together. Mm-hmm. Tim's got another story for us. All right, Tim. Take it. Hey, Threads, remember oh, the, the story I told before with Clint, our buddy Clint, we used to stay at his house a lot, right? Yeah. Well, you remember, I lived down the street from him. And you know how we would we used to walk all the way down to our other friend, Laura, where well, she lived past me, right? Yeah, my old girlfriend, Laura, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> do you remember her friend, Connie? I do. do. You remember Connie? She I do. She lived a little past Laura and a little past me. Well, mm-hmm. I, used to, I used to be friends with Co- Connie's brother. And... I would, of course, I would go spend the night over there once in a while. And uh, they would always tell me that they had a ghost in their house. And I was like, yeah, whatever. That's, you know, bullshit. That was, again, I wasn't really in, a, believe, a believer. So one time I spent the night and uh, he said, okay, this is what's going to happen. I mean, with confidence. He said, because... The, our bedroom, the bedroom, he left the door open and it was it was open to the kitchen. And he said, just if you stay up, just watch. The cabinets will open. The cabinets above the sink and everything are going to start opening. <laughs> no way, dude. And I'm like, you're so full of shit. And, and, 
and, and uh, so we're just staying up talking, and finally I'm starting to get sleepy, and we, he fell asleep, and I'm staying, I'm, I'm staying up thinking, okay, yeah, this is gonna be bullshit, but I'm curious. So she, the house is completely quiet. Everybody's asleep, and I'm awake. And damn, if the freaking cabinets didn't start opening. No way. Yeah. But not only that, I was already I was already freaked out at that. Well, they ha- they used to have a lot of dogs, and um, there was a, a bag of dog like a fifty pound bag of dog food next to the stove or something. And it was it was rolled down. You know how you you open a bag, you roll it, you roll it back up, right? Yeah. That freaking bag unrolled itself. No. <laughs> and I'm watching this, and of course I I saw the bag unroll upwards by itself, and I just all I remember I think I just I threw the covers over my face, and that was it. And the next morning, I said, okay, you're right. I'm never sleeping here again. <laughs> yes, you're right. I believe you. Oh, my God. That was that was another creepy experience. That was Connie's house? Yeah. She, wow. As a matter of fact, she was a, a, a mascot for King Our mascot, yeah, back like, at high school. Yeah. yeah. And she's, yeah. Also, she's also Dana's. Uh, Dana was in love with her, or she was in love with Dana. Remember Dana? Yeah. Dana's from uh, elementary and middle school. High school, he went to Carroll. But y'all Dana were would... grades higher than me, so that's, that's why some you know some people I knew, some people I didn't. Yeah. yeah. And then Tim was obviously too introverted for me to know him. Oh. And that and another thing I'll note is I think you weren't in advanced classes because I think that's why I knew you. Yeah, I was, I was in, in advanced, advanced class. I was in advanced class, and so that's how I was with my upperclassmen. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, uh, Tim knew uh, that that girl that I, I I was crazy about since elementary. Which Jana, is, f- Jana, f- oh my god! I don't know. Are we allowed to say names? Uh, it's too <laughs> late. So bad. A name like that needs to be said. Oh you know? man, dude, I had a crush on her forever, but because she was a grade lower, I was like, oh, what would they think? Oh, you know. Oh my goodness. I used to go deliver. And, and how I used to go deliver. How young is your wife now? Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's different in high school. Yeah, yeah, this is way For different. All you teenagers so, out there, it's different. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, whoa, you know, yeah, good old Jana. But you knew her, didn't you? You stayed friends with her and stuff. No, I never knew her. You're such a lie, dude. I'll whoop your ass right now on camera. <laughs> I never knew her. I don't. You know what? I don't even think I ever met her. Whoop you your what? damn I'm ass. Like, tell me, tell me. Like, dude, know. if she finds out, she's going to be like, Tim said he never knew me. Oh, you used to work at the health club too, son. So? And that's where you, he said you knew her. You're like, oh, I run into her all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah see, now, dude, you don't understand. This, now, this thing right here. It's because after he met me, all and, oh, you forgot everything. Foggy. <laughs> like, it was just like, you, you were in the day. Yeah. Is there someone other than Lydia? <laughs> he erased everything. He's like, <laughs> just kidding. Tim's all quiet over there. Go ahead, Tim. <laughs> no, you're right. I might have. She. I might have met her there after, way after the fact, but yeah. I never really hung out or got to know her really. Yeah, that's 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 probably. But right. I mean, she was always pretty even then. Yeah, yeah. It was, my dumb ass would be like. Go leave little, little stuff at her door and then run off. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. You had me deliver a note in, no, in, in a rose. I did so many of those times. I did them a lot of times. And one time you volunteered. You're yeah. like, I'll do it. I'm fast. And I'm like, all right, dude, go do it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this guy's fast. We did a training together, and I could not believe how fast he was. He's faster than me. Way faster. Uh, yeah. I don't even show how fast I am. Either. Yeah. I yeah, usually get a ten- telling me go slow. I'm like, am I not compared well, to him? Well, because it's, mu- it's muscle memory you're creating, right? Mm-hmm. So you're you're doing repetition so that you can yeah, think technique. of what to do next. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm that's Hella one of my fast. advantages is that I'm Hella way fast. faster than I look, and I'm extremely badass. Yeah. Hella fast. Like I'm be like, 
right? He's back. <laughs> Yeah, how it's doing. I confirm. I confirm. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think a couple of my students saw me for the first time uh, last year actually go at a 75% speed. And, uh, but it has to do, it has to do with, with, with just high repetition of the same technique. And then you can you learn how to move with your taijutsu. You, know? you remember, Tim Tim did martial arts too. Yeah. So did uh, the, it, it, Conchita over here. Yep. But uh, it's completely different. Yeah, guys. So, but yeah, that that's 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 one of Tim's story. You didn't you say you had something else to add? Was it okay? So, so here's the thing. One of the things that you said when we first started was you've had if people hang around you long enough, they have experiences. Okay. Now, here's the thing for all you ghost adventure, paranormal state, all this stuff. They'll always say they have trouble with electronics. Now here's the deal. I was the first Corpus Christi recording and that went off without a hitch. It's true. We recorded, I, cause I have never had a, a paranormal experience with him. All of my experiences were elsewhere. Okay. Second Corpus Christi recording were, were the exorcist, um, a local couple. And that went out with, went off without a hitch. Then as soon, now, we've been trying to get Tim in here. That's true. Since day one. And something always goes wrong, right? And we just keep thinking, oh, it's time. We run out of time or we run out of this, we run out of that. I didn't think anything of it. We just keep rescheduling, rescheduling, and we can't get a go. Then we bring Joshua Renee. No, your mother. And they have experience things together we did the same setup same everything all kinds of problems joshua renee the night before his mother same same setup as the exorcist couple all kinds of problems now check this out so the next we said we say joshua renee okay we're gonna have to redo that it was just this weird it wasn't even regular feedback like you know you get feedback or you get an echo and it sounds like the person it was jacked this did not sound like him at all this was a whole different voice deep guttural two octaves lower than his voice so we said we're gonna have to bring you back and record again he comes back after his after your mother after your mom all kinds of problems again all, and we and 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 when we recorded Therese's mom we said okay we're going to set it up exactly like this we're going to do exactly this so that there'll be no problems few hours later here comes Joshua Renee it was all messed up we go back and check the audio from the night before there was no echo there was no deep guttural voice then we go back and check it again, and it was back again. We don't know what the heck. It, it's really odd, and it almost sounds mockery. Right. Like the voice sounds like it's like like she says, "Hey, I'm here. Oh, I'm here." Oh, it was oh so bad. man, it was. A... So what I started thinking about last night, I went home and I talked to my daughter because the same thing. We were here from eleven in the morning yesterday till almost eleven at night. I mean, we were because of because of electrical or technical technical issues, issues. Mm -hmm. and we've been here every night i'm exhausted and i'm pretty high energy but at the end of these things i just want to go home and go to bed and then i go home and i'm okay like i have the energy again i'm okay but then i started putting two and two together and i said okay the exorcist went off without a hitch because they have no experiences together my stories went off no problem because we have no experiences together. But when you start integrating people that you've had experiences with, it seemed like those two energy sources, it would mess everything up. And we would do everything exactly, precisely the same. And it just didn't work. Yeah, my mom's footage actually is missing. Yes, his mom's footage Still, is missing. My mother's footage is actually missing. It's missing. It's not in the cloud and it's not in my computer. And we did record and it. And we checked it too. We made sure that before we left, we he stayed here for an hour after me. Trying to figure out. Where I it was gave at. her a ride home, and it's gone. Wow. And she did not want to tell her story. She did not want to come in. She was very hesitant. She didn't want to do it. 
it was hours. We were trying to deal with technical difficulties mom, yeah. for three hours. We got it going, and her stories are gone. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to throw that in because it was. Well, great observation. See, I think that's why when I do more of the, the stuff here in Corpus, I gotta have her with me. Yeah, her. that's the behind the scenes that nobody sees here is that that it's just weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, if you look through all the other ghost, uh, ghost stuff and all those, they have it on all their stuff. And then weird bugs. When the exorcists were here, just <laughs> where did that bug come from? And then it just disappeared. It was a murder hornet. It was, what it was weird. <laughs> so many weird things. Yeah. Tim, anything? Uh, thanks so much. So. You're welcome. Tim, is there anything that you, uh, you know, you want to add or, or, or the advice you want to give to the audience or, or, you know, anything you want to add to your story or, or, to the audience. Uh, well, friends, I believe that everything is about energy. Every, not just speaking paranormally, but I think if, if you believe, it's it's it exists. I mean, if, paranormally, you think of the rake. You know what the rake is, right? I'm sure all your audience. Yep. Yep. It, whatever it's like a mass what is that called Matt when a, a whole mass of people think of something it comes into existence and that could be uh UFOs whatever even even uh I believe that if you if, if you have if you're a positive thinker or a negative thinker if you believe something will come into existence it will like money for instance wealth, paranormal, ghosts, anything, whatever you believe, it will come into existence. So that's my my thought. I don't know if it's, it's not necessarily advice, but I, that's what I I think, that's what I believe. That kind of goes with, uh, with the idea of, you know, I don't know my, my my little understanding that I'll add to yours is yeah when they say you know I <laughs> I heard somebody say I don't believe in God or I don't believe in the devil and I'm like well they believe in you yeah. <laughs> you know believe you in know, a God that believes in you you know just because you don't believe doesn't mean they don't exist you know uh, but no no uh, Tim thanks so much man for coming on here it was really great. It was a little mini reunion. I got to see these two guys yeah. again, and, and um, you know, uh, but you know, we'll keep you keep in touch. And heck, if you got more stories, please keep keep in there. How can people find you again if they're looking for hunting or real estate? Uh, what what ways and means can they get a hold of you? Well, let me start with Arc Properties. It's I got an email, Timothy at Arc A R K properties LLC dot biz B I Z and again that's if somebody wants to get out of a property a house just distressed whatever uh, we'll work out a deal now there's on the other side there's the the hunting and fishing I I I can do guiding hunts or fishing trips but it's not something I advertise it's just more of a hobby uh, the number for both of them is 361-600-1615 or 361-331-3731. And that's, that's uh, the hunting and fishing. It's Lone Star Backwoods and Backwater. That's on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Just type those in and they'll come up. Fun stuff to watch and learn from. Nice. What we're going to do is we'll wind up uh, putting your stuff advertised on here and, and within that. Uh, guys, thanks again. Our Thank our guest, Timothy Marsh, for showing up and uh, giving us a little bit of stories. Uh, special thanks to Lydia Conchita Suelo Rodriguez and Tervez uh, Ortiz. De la gente. De la gente. <laughs> Lydia, thanks for being here. You're 
welcome. And thanks to the Boom Room. For real. Thanks to the Boom Room. If not, I'd be like uh, Whataburger trying to do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is my ghost cast. And again, your host, Therese Gonzalez. Hi, Therese. Bye, Lydia. Later, guys. Have a good one. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>